This video is all about color engraving with a laser. So we are gonna go in depth. We're gonna talk about what laser you need, what material you need, and the settings your laser needs to be at in order to achieve different colors when engraving. Let's get into it. Hey there, I'm Sarah. You're watching Creative Ramblings. We talk a lot about lasers on this channel. If you are a laser user or thinking about getting a laser, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. I have a ton of laser videos on here just for you. Today is all about engraving in color. This is a very technical, detailed video, but if you follow through with this and you try it on your own, you're gonna be able to have some really incredible results on your projects. So the first thing I wanna talk about, we wanna go real basic here, how, what is the process for getting color onto metal? So the reason that metal can change color when you engrave it is because of oxidation. Oxidation happens when you heat up certain types of metal to a really, really high heat and expose them to oxygen. Different temperatures will result in different colors. So the higher or lower you heat it up, combined with the speed of your laser, it's going to result in a whole rainbow of colors. So the second important thing to know is what type of metal can you achieve different colors on? The metal that we're using in this video is stainless steel. I have some traditional silver stainless steel. I also have some rose gold pieces, but stainless steel is gonna give you a wide range of color. You can also do this on titanium, and you can probably achieve it on other metals as well, but you're gonna get the widest array of colors on stainless steel and titanium. Whenever you're going to engrave metal, make sure you're wiping it down really well. Avoid touching it with your fingers. Use a microfiber cloth. You want that metal to be perfectly clean when you place it in your machine. This is gonna give you great results. The third important factor is what type of laser can you use to achieve color engraving? So there's a couple different answers to this question. You can engrave metal with a diode laser and get some color variation. A diode laser may also be referred to as a blue light laser. I would recommend using one that's at least 20 watts, if not more powerful. A 10 watt or a five watt laser probably isn't gonna be powerful enough to change colors on the metal. I am using a fiber laser, specifically the Xtool F1 Ultra, which has both a fiber laser and a diode laser in it. The fiber laser is 20 watts and it is plenty of power to get some really cool color differences on the stainless steel. You can also use an IR module, which is very similar to a fiber laser, but less power. Uh, you can use the original F1, which has a two watt IR module or the IR module that fits into the S1. If you're using an IR module, you can follow all these steps that we're going to go through, but your results and your power and speed combinations are going to be a little bit different than the ones we're doing with our fiber laser here. I am going to be using the Xtool F1 Ultra. Again, it's a fiber and diode laser combined. It's an incredible machine. I have a whole bunch of videos on it. They're down in the description if you want to take a look and learn more. I am also using Xtool Creative Space or XCS. So this whole walkthrough is going to be done in the Xtool software. There is a lot you can do in this software without having to go into third-party apps and I'm gonna try to teach you how to do that all right here. The first thing we need to do is create a test array. This can easily be done in XCS. A test array is a gradient of varying powers and speeds on little squares all on a little piece of metal. Once you have this test array, it's a guide for what your settings need to be to achieve a certain color. I run test arrays when I'm doing any project, not just color engraving, especially when I'm engraving or cutting a new material. I run a test first to make sure my settings are optimal. And this is not very technical, but I keep little yellow legal pads like this next to each one of my lasers. It says the name of the laser on top. And when I get perfect settings for something, I write them down. It's a really handy reference to have right there. 
The material that we're using for this test array are stainless steel dog tags. The thickness of the metal matters. This is not super thick, but it's not super thin either. It is definitely not flexible. When you heat up metal and expose it to oxygen, so oxidation, you're going to achieve different colors. Thin metal does not hold heat as well as thick metal. So the thicker your stainless steel, the better color variation you're going to have in your results. Whatever material you want to create your project on, run the test array on that same material. You could buy a set of 50 dog tags in a rose gold stainless steel and then get another set of 50 a month later and your results could be different. Every batch can be different. So always keep in mind that you want to run that test array first. I am in Xtool Creative Space or XCS. I have already connected my F1 Ultra and inside I have placed a stainless steel tag, making sure that it's nice and clean so my fingerprints don't interfere with anything. I like working on the grid here when it's white and it's just a clear background, so I'm not going to measure our thickness or refresh the camera just yet. We're going to create a material test array to get an idea of all the different colors that this machine can create. So the first thing I need to do is create a shape. This can actually be any shape. We're going to do a rectangle. Now in the easy set panel, I need to tell the machine what to do. We want to engrave this and use the fiber laser, not the blue light laser, not the diode, the fiber laser. The power and the speed do not matter. We're going to set that in a minute, but the lines per centimeter I'm moving up to 200. I have found that I get a little bit richer color and a little bit more variation if that lines per centimeter is higher. We're going to leave it at one pass, but again, the passes do matter. If you try this out and then do the same exact test array with two passes, you might get some differences. So with all of this set and the rectangle highlighted, I'm going to come down here and click on material test array. And now I can tell the machine what I want to do. So for power, I'm going to leave the max at 100%, but I'm going to leave the minimum at about 20. For speed, I do not need to go up to 10,000 millimeters per second. We're going to come down to about 1,000, and we'll leave the minimum at 10. And I want to get a lot of spacing between these two, so we're going to go to 15 columns and 10 rows. I'm going to space them a little bit closer to one another, leaving that gap at about one millimeter. So with all of this set, I can hit done. And this is my test array. Now I don't want to change anything from here. I am going to make it quite a bit smaller though, because my piece of stainless steel is quite a bit smaller. Now over on the right, if I click off of the test array, now I can measure the thickness. This is going to let the F1 Ultra uh, auto measure and determine how thick the material on the base plate is. And now I can refresh the camera and I'll get a view of that little tag that's sitting in there. Now I can take my test array and just size it to get on this circle here. All right, let's process this and see how it comes out. This is some great variation in color we got on this one. I can tell that that bottom row was probably a little too dark. I don't get a ton of variation. You'll notice on this one that the score settings weren't quite enough, so none of the numbers showed up. So I'm going to have to write those in with a Sharpie. So now that I've got a really good test grid to show me the different powers, we are going to create a design. And so I've got this design created here with a bunch of different pieces. And let me show you how I did the settings. We'll have a word engraved down here. The 
word is going to be engraved at a power of 100 and a speed of 1,000. This is going to give me kind of a deep reddish yellow color. I kept all the lines per centimeter at 200. When I have an outline around the word piece, the outline is going to be at a power of 38 and a speed of 10 to give me a really dark outline. Then each of these flowers is a little bit different. So this first flower is at a power of 26 and a speed of 10, which is going to give me kind of a dark gold color. This next flower stays at a power of 26, but we go up to a speed of 120, which is really gonna lighten it up. And then we move up to a power of 38 and a speed of 230, which is gonna change the color again. So let's see how this turns out on one of these blanks. So I've done a lot of tests on stainless steel. This is all different types of stainless steel. So these are rose gold dog tags that I really like. I started with these, a lot of different test grids and then some different pictures we've done. I have done the bottle openers and then the tags that we did in this video. Every time you get a blank, make sure you're switching it out and you're running a test grid because this is actually the same exact grid on two different pieces and the color variation is very different. I think you get more color variation when you use a silver background versus when when you use a gold background. And it definitely changes in the light. This is under artificial light. If you take this out in the sun, you're going to see a little bit different. This is probably my favorite grid to grab different colors from. And then you can use that grid as a guide to then make pieces like this. I know that you can achieve a really cool pink and blue color, but I haven't been able to get it just yet. Again, that's just going to be more testing, maybe more lines per centimeter, maybe a couple passes, different power and speed combinations, maybe different blanks. But I really like this variation between the really soft white and the almost dark black and all the different reds in between. So in this video, I wanted to teach you how to engrave in color, and I hope you're walking away with a good understanding of how to do that, what type of laser you need, and the relationship between power and speed and material, and how that all works together. Now go try this yourself, make sure you run a bunch of tests, and you're gonna get some really cool results. If you have any further questions, let me know down in the comments, I'd love to chat with you. If you're not already subscribed to Creative Ramblings, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Thank you.